Well, happy 4th of July to you all and happy Monday. I hope you're doing well. Well, today we begin 2 Corinthians. We're going to be going through that for the next few weeks. And so we want you to be a part of that with us. And today we're going to talk a little bit how God uses adversity to bring us to him. Hi, I'm Pastor Mark with Heist Christian Church, and we are going through the Bible in five years. We would love it if you would subscribe to this channel and be a part of it with us every day as we go through the Bible in five years. Not only you, not only me, but also uh, the Congregation of Heights as we are reading the same passages of Scripture on a daily basis, and we would love for you to be a part of that with us. All right, well, let's dive right into 2 Corinthians and see what we can do. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all his holy people throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God of Father, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who confronts, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. And as you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in our relations with, relations with you, with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not only on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. For we do not write you anything you cannot read or understand. And I hope that, as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I can say yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes us, but makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I call God as my witness and stake my life on it, that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that, I, not that we lord over your faith, but we, look, we work with you for your joy, because it is by faith you stand firm. So I made up my mind that I would not make another painful visit to you. For I grieve, if I grieve you, 
Who is left to make me glad but you whom I have grieved? I wrote as I did so that when I came, I would not be distressed by those who should have made me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you that you would share all that you would all share my joy. For I wrote you out of great distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. If anyone has caused grief, he has not so much grieved me as he has grieved all of you to some extent, not to put it too severely. The punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient. Now instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. Another reason I wrote you was to see if you would stand the test and be obedient in everything. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there is anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Okay, well, there's lots to talk about in this passage of Scripture, but let's do a brief introduction, if you will, of 2 Corinthians. Remember, 1 Corinthians was the second letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. We've lost the first one. And there's a third letter that is not around that we don't know, known as the severe letter. And this is a letter that Paul probably was much shorter. It was just very severe. He was grieved by what has been going on with the Corinthian church. And so he is in Ephesus when all this is happening. And so he wrote, he, write first, he writes 1 Corinthians. <laughs> and later on, he goes on to Troas. And then probably to the Philippian church where he writes what we have as 2 Corinthians to them. So in between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, there's a visit from Paul. There's a, two letters from Paul, and this is where we get 2 Corinthians. <coughs> so there was obviously something going on at the Corinthian church. Many people talk about <coughs> Paul's reference to the forgiving of this young man or man here <coughs> who has grieved Corinthians. And if that's the case, was this the man who was involved in incest? And I don't think it is. But regardless, Paul's idea here when he writes to the Corinthian church is you have punished him, now forgive him. And if you forgive him, I forgive him. Because what Paul's idea is to Punishment should be in hopes of restoration and not just for punishment for punishment's sake. And that's an important aspect to look at that. Um, we don't want to judge people just for judgment's sake. We want to judge people so that we can bring them back into obedience of the scriptures, into obedience and restoration within the community. I myself have um, experienced that myself and I am grateful that I had people willing to speak truth into my life and to help me change my ways. So, but the main thing I want to talk about today is the letter we just, or the first part of 2 Corinthians 1 that we read. Paul talks about enduring um, suffering and um, having a, a bunch of, uh, of adversity in his life. It's something that he can't handle. Oftentimes, I myself uh, are in, is, is in counseling with people and they say, I can't do it. It's too much for me. Well, Paul in the same way, it was too much for him. But because it was too much for him, he had to rely on the Lord. So when you are faced with adversity and it seems like almost too much that you can handle, that's a great place to be because then you have to turn it over to God for God to handle and that gives that builds us in faith and that gives us uh, dependence upon him rather than our own abilities. And can I tell you, oftentimes when I go through adversity and I have to turn to the Lord because I've, I've, I'm at wit's end, that's a great thing and helps us to remember that sometimes God can use adversity to draw us closer to him and that is never a bad thing. Let me encourage you with those words and we will see you tomorrow.